almost two years ago now, I fitted these second-hand metal gates with my dad. You'll find a video link somewhere above. But with other projects and holidays coming and going, it's been a struggle to find the right time and weather to give it a new lease of life. That was until last week. So hang about if you want to see how I tackle it. Firstly, there was a fair amount of rust on it. But this time, I didn't want to be the old Vicky, spending days manually and tediously removing it by hand using a wire brush. As therapeutic as it can be, so I'm about to crank it up by testing a few gifted power tools and products on the job. I'll leave links to everything I use, but as usual, I'll still talk honestly and transparently as I go along. Nothing's paid and I'm not obliged to say anything nice. So let's start with some 115mm poly discs, which admittedly had received well before lockdown had even started. Anyway, the plan was to fit them in my works battery powered angle grinder, also gifted, so I could strip the rust and flaky paint off in seconds. However, one of the hurdles that I faced was the prongs on the tightening device was a little bit too short. These discs were 16mm thick. So off to the workshop to try and make some sort of jig with an offcut and screwdrivers, which seemed to do the trick. Although obviously you've got to make sure it's tight and I did this at my own risk. Now time to test it. This was bliss. No sweating over a wire brush, hand sanding, tripping over cables while I danced around the gate, stripping paint any which way. But I can't stress this enough though, angle grinders are noisy, so wear some ear defenders thankfully minor Bluetooth, with a bit of lo-fi on Amazon Music to stop me getting bored, and wear goggles and a mask. It wasn't so much the flaking rust that was the issue, but flex from the poly discs would revengefully ping on my bare arms and face, which sometimes hurt, and I wouldn't have been best pleased if these went in my eyes. But of course, I forgave it because it was doing most of the work for me. But the issue that I found with a battery powered angle grinder for continuous jobs like this is that it would last about 15 minutes of non-stop use. So unless you've got lots of batteries with the same system, you might want to look at a corded option or take very long tea breaks in between. And I couldn't quite get into the intricate areas like around the knobs and tight gaps. So for the sections between the spindles, I turned to testing Works's new Maker X cordless angle grinder. This also comes with three discs, a slim metal and plastic cutting disc, which I didn't use for this, a fan-shaped sand disc, you'll see that shortly, and this grinding disc, which I tried first. Yep, had no issues removing much of the rust I could access, but how about the knobs? It certainly blitzed the rust off, but I thought it was a bit too harsh and shaved more metal off than I wanted to. Which then left me curious how the disc sander would work. This by far was my absolute favourite for the job, which I ended up using it for about an hour or two. And because it doesn't use as much power as the bigger angle grinder, that also meant it lasted so much longer, maybe about an hour at least per battery. It took quite a beating, so I definitely want to stock up on some replacement pads of these. Another thing though, there's also a knack to not pushing it down too much, which will then grind it to a halt, pun intended. But when you ease off, it'll get back to speed again. So I had to get it at the right angle and I soon adjusted. But overall, this was an absolute pleasure to use and it was much quieter. Another thing that's obvious is it's still attached to a cord. So I turned to my new tool belt drill holster attached to my belt. For reference, the drill holster isn't gifted, but the belt is. More on that in another video. For the spindles, I tried Works battery sander. I can't give a full review on this yet because I've only used it for this small attachment. Although it did take me a while to work out, you've got to crank the top to release the base. But in all honesty, I could have spent the rest of the week being a perfectionist and removing every speck of rust. And if that was going to happen, 
I may as well buy another gate already painted. So I'd set in my mind just to spend one day and no more on the prep work. As long as it was sound and there was nothing loose, I was happy with that. And on that note, day two, couldn't resist a bit of wire brushing and twisting sandpaper around the spindles in case I did miss anything. And then wash the whole thing with warm soapy water. And another thanks, but this time to Tough Built, for sending me my first ever decent pair of knee pads, which I normally just end up reaching for a cushion because most of the ones on the market, at least the ones in my workshop, are really uncomfortable and dig into my legs. These have really comfy gel pads inside. And again, you'll see a lot more of these coming up in future builds, but it became instinctive to wear them most of the time during this project. And that's unusual for me. I missed a trick here. I really should have brought my works hydro shot. That would have saved a lot of time. You live, you learn. Okay, paint. Let's talk paint. It really depends on the look that you want. I had half a can left over of Hammerite Director Rust Metal in smooth black, and I opted for a brush. It also claims to protect metals for up to eight years. And you could go for the spray can option, and I'm sure it would be quicker and give a smoother finish. But I felt the brush would be more therapeutic. And there was something about aerosol cans that put me off being bad for the environment. So I sacrificed a bit of texture and I'm fine with that. If you are using this kind of paint, then yeah, try a foam roller or a velour roller. It's completely up to you. If you don't want to be disappointed, do some tests first. But here's a few quick tips. Use plenty of rags weighted down, particularly if it's as windy as this was, and store the paint in an old washing up bowl as you're using it. So if you knock it over, you're self-containing the spills. And I started from the bottom and worked my way up. And also I was careful not to apply too much to prevent drips and sagging, and not too little to prevent more texture than I wanted. I also paid attention to the mounting strips, but I had to masking tape those because I definitely didn't want to get paint on the brickwork. But by the time I'd finished the first coat, luckily my starting point was dry enough for a second coat. And since I've been planning to do this for nearly two years, I'd fixated on having gold or silver knobs, which I masking taped off first, that was after a weekend of the black paint drying, and used this pound shop stuff that my mum kindly picked up for me. And it was pretty good. Dogger, nice. Go away, dogger. It definitely didn't dry as quick as the hammerite stuff. And the slight texture it leaves, I rather liked it. It was like a brushed gold. And once that was completely dry, I left that overnight, I gave it a final coat and revealed the masking tape. Anyway, I'm curious, because sometimes I get stubborn about methods. Would you have definitely gone for the spray paint method? Or would you have been happy with a paintbrush and slight texture? And do you think spray cans are as harmful as they used to be? Let me know below and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.